KettleRackCoach.com Stop and Chop Technique. This is a great technique for novice or beginning surgeons to learn. Now, we feature this technique many times here on Cataract Coach because I really think it's important that you learn this. This is a nice way of transitioning from doing divide and conquer, which is probably the most common beginner technique that's taught, into going towards chop. So stop and chop is, of course, halfway between the two. The term coined by Paul Koch, and that is to do your FACO groove down the middle and then stop after you split it in two halves, and then chop each half. So it's a combination of half divide and conquer and half chop. Now this surgeon placed a little marker to make a little indentation temporarily on the corneal epithelium to give a guide, act as a guide for creation of the capsular rexus. And so now poking in here with a cystotome, I'm gonna show you this video. Surgeon's gonna get that flipped over and create a nice rexus. We're just gonna show you the first few minutes of this video, show you up until the nucleus removal. Again, we're showing this video at real time. This video is aimed for our surgeons who are more on the beginning side of the bell curve. You wanna learn stop and chop because you know it's gonna be a good technique for you. And you know, you can use stop and chop for the entirety of your career. There are still cases where I do stop and chop even though I much prefer chop. Quick chop, direct chop, combo chop, vertical chop, flip and chop, whatever you want. But I sometimes will do a stop and chop just if I want to debulk the central densest part of a, let's say a dense a brunescent cataract. That groove down the middle helps debulk that nucleus. It's a nice looking Rex is right there. I'll take it. So in stop and chop, you definitely want to make sure you have good hydro dissection. And so oh, using a specialized cannula here, it looks like a flattened cannula, getting a good fluid wave going across there. And the reason why you want to have good hydrodissection is you want to be able to spin that nucleus, right? If it does not spin, you will not win. And that spins, so he's good. And now here comes the stop and chop technique. So here's what we want to show you. Now, the first thing is creation of that groove. A little small aliquot of viscoelastic. I like that. Here comes a phaco probe. Now what setting should you use? You can use a fake or power modulation like a, a pulse mode if you do at least 50% duty cycle, or you can use continuous. And the key here is to make this groove, so vacuuming out that central lens cortex from the anterior surface of the lens, just to give yourself a better view, and then the groove should start just inside the subincisional rexus. There, good job. And a nice groove going here, don't hit the rexus, and now go deeper, and look how those three Purkinje light images stay in the center of the eye. The surgeon does a fantastic job of pivoting. So if you're learning stop and chop, you need to copy this surgeon. Emulate this right here. Nice groove down there in the middle. Looks really good. And now, once that initial groove is made, the chopper goes in and the two halves can be propagated and separated. So separating out the two halves, and there's a nice complete separation. Now you change the setting on your FACO machine to high vacuum. So you can hold the pieces here, and this is not even using vacuum, just using a mechanical force. Now bringing up each quadrant, very nicely done. Again, look how the three light images staying are staying right in the center of the cornea. So a fantastic job of keeping this eye in primary position. Half the nucleus is already gone. Now all you do is rotate the other half around. And now use the Faker Pro, bring it up, and look, the chopper will go around it again. And here's another chop. So I, I, I saw this video and I thought, wow, that's just a really clean and pretty stop and chop technique. And I really want to show this to my younger viewers that you can learn how to do this technique and it'll really serve you very well. You could go your entire career only doing stop and chop. You don't have to learn Faker Chop, though I encourage you to. And this technique looks great. So if you take home a message from this case, that is you can definitely learn stop and chop. It's not that insurmountable. If you're doing divide and conquer, I think you need to force yourself to transition to this. It'll make you a better surgeon and give your patients better outcomes. Thanks for watching.